Alright guys, welcome to your 60th UDK tutorial and in this lesson I'm going to finish covering the rest of the matinee interface. So now that we covered the toolbar, or basically there are a couple buttons that we forgot to cover but I'm actually going to be saving those for later. Let's go ahead and cover these tabs right here. So what these tabs are, they're basically a better way of organizing your tracks. So some animations you're going to have a bunch of tracks like a movement track and let me go ahead and add another you know event track or something. So what these do is they organize your tracks. So any camera tracks would go in here, any skeletal meshes tracks would go in here. Since we added that one event track whenever we click our event tab then that event track would go right there. But you usually you just want to work with all so whenever you're working under the all tab you can see all your tracks. So now let me go ahead and delete that event track for now because we don't need it. And the next thing I want to go over is this, what I've been talking about all along. And that's the time slider. So remember I told you guys that you basically were going to have an animation made up of keyframes. Give it a starting point and an ending point in this case scenario. Well what the time slider does is it basically, you can slide it to somewhere in between to basically give you the current time of that animation. Again, if you just visually look what's going on, you can see a lot better than I explain it. So, again, it's pretty obvious what that is. Now, this thing with the green triangles, and I got an idea that this was bothering you because you guys probably couldn't figure out what this was because whenever we scrolled over it, nothing really happens. This and this button right here kind of go hand in hand. This green shaded area controls the loop preview playback and what I mean by that is you can select a special area with this green and if you hit the loop section playback it only plays that section of your animation so you guys can see what's going on right here so if you have a long animation and you have a little piece that's going wrong and it's kinda of bothering you and you just want to focus on that then this is where you can you know maybe you want to make a loop of something and play it back it's pretty obvious to see what's going on so now let me go ahead and scroll that out of the way because if you're not using it I like to move it to be the to the what? to the beginning <laughs> nice little wrap there or it uh... it kind of bothers me so that's what that does so now I'll talk to you guys about this red triangle I touched on that a little bit before but this red triangle at the bottom controls the entire length of your animation so typically you want to have an animation that starts you know at the beginning and it ends you know after three seconds or something but then you can have your entire movie play for longer so say you wanted to I don't know do something like this you wanted to have your door move from zero to three seconds but after five seconds or four seconds you wanted an announcement to play so you would have your entire movie four seconds long and then you would have an announcement coming off this completed thing so I just want to tell you guys that you can have an animation within a movie so you guys might think that this is just wasted space but it's there's actually kind of an art to you know deciding the time of your animation using your keyframes and also the overall length of your movie so I'm gonna go ahead and move that to 4.5 because why the heck not and the last thing I want to touch on is these keyframes I told you guys about them before but the keyframes are basically just points in time or checkpoints where you want things to occur so at the beginning at my 00, zero keyframe I want the door to be right there and now at my what time is this 266 keyframe I want my keyframe or excuse me I want my door to be on bottom so in between your keyframes the UDK is automatically going to fill in and here's a nice little tip if you go ahead and hold control and try to move a keyframe it moves that keyframe to you know whatever time you want however say I was trying to move this to three seconds and you know maybe I don't know I'm nervous because I'm just getting married and I can't quite get it on three seconds if you go ahead and right click a keyframe you can go ahead and set that time to 3.0 and it's going to do all their dirty work for you. It's going to hop that right to 3.0. So that's a nice little trick whenever you're trying to position keyframes exactly how you want them. So then I can go ahead and, you know, position that right there. And now my entire animation kind of plays exactly how I want it to. Pretty cool, huh? So aside from that, 
I guess I'll talk to you guys about the individual tracks now. Now I remember that I told you guys that you can have groups and if you right click a group you can add individual tracks. Now a track is basically saying what do you want to animate in the UDK so you can animate things other than just things moving around you can animate um, I guess I'll go through a couple of these things well let me go ahead and well I guess I might as well just test this out a boolean don't worry about that it's kinda of confusing uh, a new event track is one that we're going to actually be using quite often what a new event track does is it basically if you go ahead and select that track and move your current time indicator to like one and a half seconds and add a keyframe and you're gonna want to go ahead and name this event like um, play announcement and make sure you spell it wrong and hopefully I did and now whenever your animations playing go ahead and look in kismet right now whenever your user triggers that trigger and plays this animation it's gonna play and as soon as it hits that one and a half second mark then this play announcement event is gonna fire so this can kick off an announcement and you might want to add you know a new action um, an announcement right there to play an announcement so basically an event track is a keyframe where it triggers an event to happen at that point in time so now let me go ahead and delete that and when I delete this look over in kismet that event disappeared as well so I guess I can go ahead and delete that clean up purposes and I'll just go over a couple more of these real quick to show you guys the different things that can be animated. Um, face effects is for whenever you're making like an animation and you want their face to move, then there you go. Animation control is for skeletal meshes and like character movement. Um, particles, whenever we deal with particle systems. Uh, float properties has again to deal with kind of like certain actors and objects have a float property. And let's see what morph weight has to deal with skeletal meshes and character movement and again all of these things I just wanna demonstrate a few of them to tell you guys you can animate things other than just moving crap around on your screen so you can basically animate anything that you can pop into your mind so with that being said that basically covers everything I needed to cover again there's this property section down here but with all of my tutorials I'm just gonna be going over the properties as we need them so I won't really worry about that right now the two other things I wanna go over that kinda of don't fit into this interface at all but I need to tell you guys is whenever you're working and you wanna alter a keyframe you may have a little trouble and that's because you don't have a keyframe selected whenever you have a keyframe selected a couple things are gonna happen it's gonna say the name of the key right there and it's also gonna say adjust key whatever the key number is in your perspective view so if you're trying to edit a keyframe make sure you are on that key because some people will get off a little bit like right there and they try to move this around and it doesn't work and it, the reason is because they're not on the key so I want to give you guys that nice little tip before you run into that problem and the last thing I want to tell you guys is this by default whenever you add an interp actor the collision is off so let me go ahead and show you guys what happens when I run through this door I'm gonna go ahead and my character can run right through that door so what the heck so you obviously want to change this like if you have a door or something and you don't want your character to run through it. so like I said by default the properties of an interp actor has no collision so if you make a door or a roof or you know anything that you want your user to bump into go ahead and hit F4 and under collision let's see if I can find it again collision type no collide that means your player can run through it shoot through it they can drive through it and if we have a door we're just gonna wanna hit block all that means that our user can't run through it and it basically acts like a big chunk of wood that now they can shoot it and bump into it with cars and stuff like that so I just want to tell you guys those couple things because I get those questions a lot on my forum so I thought I'd cover them right now again they didn't really fit into this tutorial but I might as well get that out of the way so that's all I have for you guys in this tutorial so thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and uh, yeah I'll see you next time